I call myself a home funeral guide. And there, uh, three years ago, there were about 30 in the, in the whole country. <laughs> Why not have the family have control of this time in, in life? People can um, do it themselves. This really should be a do-it-yourself um, with, uh, with a little bit of knowledge. And what we're trying to do, I'm trying to say, is that we want to bring it back um, and, but only as a choice. You know, we don't want everybody to think it's either or, or like, you know, you can't do it this way or that way. When you're gonna talk about a funeral home, talk about keeping the body at home too. Give them the option. So many families, when they understand it, they go, really? And you can see their eyes kind of widen and it, they, get, they sort of start to get it. So I'm just begging people who are in, the, in that ministry, and it could be you know, chaplains or hospice nurses or whomever, to give people the choice about this. In every single state in this country, it is legal to keep a body at home after death. So the first thing I do when, I, when a family tells me or they think in, it's in the actual death itself, the first thing I do is tell people just take a big deep breath because at that point the person's gone and there's no need to rush. But you know there is this feeling of okay well, who do we call, we got to do this, we got to do that and there's absolutely no reason why that has to be rushed. Even to do the nurse pronouncement I tell people you don't have to call hospice right away. Just sit with them. There's nothing to be done. You know, light the candles, you know, light the incense, just settle in for as long as you need to. Then you call in whomever. But um, it's, you know, call me if you want me to help you with all of this. But um, basically don't, don't get into a big crazy rush thing. Because this is the most beautiful time. This is the time when if a family would like to wash their loved one. The families are doing the work. We're educating the families. There's times when I don't even touch a body. You know, it's like if, they're, if they jump in and want to do it all, great. Sometimes I'll help out here and there, but it's always led by the family. Some families take pride in saying, no, not one stranger touched this person who I love, not one stranger. Everyone who touched her loved her. And I just want you to appreciate too how dignified and how beautiful it is. I mean, it's not like this thrown together thing. It's just, it's people, you know, still treat it very, very, um, in a very respectful and dignified way um, and spend as much time as they want. I tell families, if they're going to have the funeral home, do the, you know, final transport, and not until you're ready. Not until you're ready. Do not pick up that phone until you're ready. And so they'll wait and they'll wait and they'll wait. What I've found, people, is you just, you love this person and you just do it. You clean them because you love them and you want to make them beautiful in this moment. Everything that families get out of this, you know, they get the time. You're going to grieve for years and years, maybe the rest of your life, but, but you will have memories, I believe, of of stories that got told, you know, at the, in the privacy and intimacy of your own home. And you're not on display somewhere for like, okay, seven to nine, you're there, that's it. You, you have just as much time as you need to tell those stories, to grieve, to involve the family in a lot of different tasks. It takes a very brave family to go through this because they're walking through a threshold of absolute fear of the unknown. They have to take this a real step of belief in, in me and in this process that it's going to be okay and maybe in you someday to say, okay, Nancy said this, I'm going to believe her. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's a very exciting and beautiful thing that you can do here.